Hello everyone, welcome back to the channel. Got another random 3.75118 action figure opening for you today. Welcome to the party, pal! Okay guys, welcome back. And just like I said in the opening, this is another of my random opening videos. I do uh, have a few others on the channel. Um, the premise of this video is to open up random figures that are in the same scale. Um, the scale is the only thing that really connects uh, these figures because I am a 118 375 inch collector. And I think actually this time all of these figures are in the 375 scale. They are not actually 118. Um, we've got a Star Wars Vintage Collection Grand Admiral Thrawn. We've got Aquaman in the Lost Kingdom Mira from DC Spin Masters. And then we've got a Hammond Collection Mattel Owen Grady. And I threw in, just as an added bonus, I guess, this Dimitrodon. I think it's how you say that. So it's actually three figures and a, and a beast. Um, these are always lots of fun to do. Um, so that's what we're opening today. Let's start out with the Grand Admiral Thrawn. All right, guys, and here is the Vintage Collection Hasbro Grand Admiral Thrawn in his Vintage Collection packaging. And this is my favorite packaging at the 375-118 scale. Um, very nostalgic to me. Love the Star Wars racetrack. This is based on his appearance in the Rebels show. So it's a it was a cartoon, um, but they've made the figure in uh, realistic form. Uh, I've had this for quite a while and have not opened it. My son, I did get one for my son. He opened his right away. So I have uh, fooled around with this guy a little bit. There's the rest of the figures that were in this wave, the cross cell. I do have all of those figures there. This is a really good wave. All of these figures were actually really good. This one, because of the soft goods and the tunic, is probably the weakest one. Um, it's still a very good, highly articulated figure. Um, but all these are very good. That was one of my army build. That was my army builder of the year last year. This HK-87 Assassin droid. Um, I do have a video up of my favorite lines from last year. Please check that out. I'll leave a link to it here. This guy is featured in that video. But this is a great looking figure. Uh, I love the card art. Let's get him open. Okay, here is Grand Admiral Thrawn out of packaging. And I've only had him out for a minute or two, but I can say he is a really good figure. He has all of the modern articulation that this vintage collection figures are coming with now. He does have the ball hinged hips with the thigh swivel, a double hinged, or excuse me, a single hinged knee with the rocker ankle pivot ankle he does have like the swivel waist but it is i think on a ball joint diaphragm so he can lean a bit forward he can lean a bit back and you can hear mine almost sounds like a ratchet it does have a ball hinged neck feels like a double barbell um he's got ball hinged shoulders elbows and hinged wrists his trigger hand is a up and down hinge while his other hand is grabbing hand is an in and out hinge great looking figure it's nice to have an admiral in a white suit that's not human i believe he's chiz right i think that's how you say the species of grand admiral thrawn and man he's got a great Great looking face sculpt. Those red eyes. Really well done. Sculpted hair. Great looking figure. The only thing I noticed on mine, I think you can see right there on top of his belt, it either, yeah, it looks like it was missed in the paint or they've got white paint on it on accident, which isn't too noticeable from certain angle but on the other side it sort of is so a little a little QC control problem there um, he does have a workable holster 
and here is this blaster. I'm not familiar with this blaster either. I'm not sure if this is the first figure we've gotten with this blaster. It is a solid gray. It does have a trigger guard hole there. Fits right into his hand. And he has the trigger finger that goes right through the hole. Um, put the blaster in the holster. Great figure, guys. I think, you know, I, mine just has that that little paint error there. Um, well, yeah, it looks like it was missed. I'm thinking it's either I would see their white got on there, or they didn't paint the white black, one or the other. But articulation, the sculpt. He's got the the blaster accessory. It'd be nice if that was painted a little bit better, but I understand. And it is it is of that really soft plastic too, so they haven't quite figured that out. You can see it bends there. Um, but still, overall, this is a really good figure. It's great to have some alien admiral commanding your fleet. Got the nice uniform. Love the boots. Very glossy with the boots and the belt. Got his rank there. Everything's done really well. Really well. Peg holes. Seems to stand pretty well. Oh, now he doesn't want to. There he goes. But yeah, overall, I think this is a really good figure. Great to have commander for your Imperial Army. I think the head sculpt is wonderful. Did a really good job with the eyebrows, the face. Really good figure, guys. It's definitely a pickup. Um, does have the blue skin, so I'm not sure how easily that would be to be able to customize him, pop this head off, pop these hands out. You probably could make this a human um, a few pop and swaps, but overall, this is a great looking figure. It's great to, for us to finally get some Rebel Rebels figures from the show. All right, let's open up an, another figure now. All right, uh, now we're going to open up the DC Spin Master Aquaman. Or Aquaman, yeah, Aquaman and the Lost Kingdom Mira it does say that she has some accessories included. Um, they are typically in this little box here. There's the rest of the wave. I don't really care for this packaging. I know they've tr tried to go uh, plastic free. Um, yeah, I did get this on sale for about three bucks at Walmart. I haven't watched the movie yet. I actually just got it um, just the other day on Blu-ray. I picked it up. Uh, but I have not taken the time to watch it yet, so this is sort of my first, my first uh, opening of any Aquaman stuff. I did pick up the submarine that came with Black Manta and Aquaman, but I have not opened that yet either. I'm a little bit behind right now, um, so I've got that Aquaman, that Manta, and this Mira. I did not pick up these two, Orm and the Stealth Suit Aquaman. All right, so that is the packaging. Let's get her open. All right, guys, here's the DC Spin Master Aquaman Mira. And I've had her out for a minute or two, and she's pretty good. Um, I don't think they quite got the likeness of the actress who plays the character, but it's still a very nice face sculpt nonetheless. She is quite pretty. She does have a quite a nice figure. There's a lot of texture in the suit. Um, I think her hair has been sculpted really well to mimic floating in the water, I believe. She's got a crown there. Um, not bad. I was a little worried. Whenever I see females with shoes or feet like this, I always question if they're going to be able to stand. And she doesn't seem to have too much problem standing. Um, the other thing too is they'll they'll give them peg holes, but the foot is so small, it's so thin. Those peg holes typically 
are so shallow you can't even get them on a stand um, if you could, but she seems to stand quite okay. Um, she's got the standard Spin Master articulation, which is the ball jointed head or neck. Her, she's very hindered though because of the sculpt of her hair. So you can get a little left and right. Little, eh, almost a down, no up or, or no back. Um, ball hinged shoulders, elbows, nothing in the wrist, no waist. She does have ball hinged hips and a thigh swivel and a ball hinged knee, but nothing below the knee. And I always feel like these figures, they're one or two points of articulation, whether it be the waist, the ankle, the wrist, one of those three, um, from, from really bringing this line up um, uh, to more collectors, you know. Um, I actually, and I know it's, from what I've seen online, most people prefer the comic book DC Spin Master stuff. Um, I actually prefer the movie stuff. Um, they seem to uh, give the most love to Batman, you know, uh, like they should. Um, and that's sort of the comic booky. Uh, Spin Master stuff that I enjoy the most, but otherwise I enjoy the movie stuff. Um, I like more realistic looking figures. I think these two actually look like they could be in the same universe because they are both very realistic. Um, he is based on a cartoon, but he is uh, done in a in a realistic way, and she is a realistic based on a movie DC character. But she is she's nice. Um, it's it's nice to have um, an unusual looking, you know, female character. There's some sculpting and paintwork here in her forearm and on her hand, in her suit here, around the navel. Again, more sculpting texture here in the boot. Uh, very nice, very nice. Got a lot of skin showing up here. Um, but the tone looks really good. Like I said, the face is... Pretty well done. Um, it's just too bad that the hair kind of gets in the way of her uh, really turning, but it does look like it's floating. You know, she is underwater, I'm assuming, in the movie. She had come with these sort of water effects, and they fit in her hands pretty well. Um, the only problem I had was this one is, is a pretty solid piece of plastic and when she holds it in her hands either hand it does seem to tip her over um, because it is pretty it, it throws her balance off you can achieve a, a pose though it does look like she's sort of pulling or pushing throwing water um, but this one is quite heavy and it does sort of pull her down uh, but this one fits pretty well and doesn't have that same effect on her. But overall, she's a pretty good figure. And I, you know, I got her for three bucks um, at Walmart. I think they sort of knew that, you know, the movie wasn't going to do well. And she was, this. they were on discount on clearance before the movie had even come out. And so I picked her up. She was actually the first one I picked up, and at first, the only one I wanted. I ended up getting everything I wanted from this line, which was the submarine that came with the Aquaman and Manta, and then her. So overall, she's a pretty good figure. I think even at like $7.99, um, she's pretty good, or $8.99, whatever the Spin Master stuff goes for at full price. In my opinion, these are still better than the Super 7 uh, 5 POA stuff that goes for 20 um, in my opinion, I don't know what you guys think about that. Let me know in the comments below. Um, in fact, I always think the price of these Spin Masters is what those five POA uh, Super 7s should go for. Um, but they do not. But this is a good figure. Solid, solid figure, guys. All right, let's open the next one. Okay, I've got the Hammond Collection Owen Grady by Mattel here. And um, it looks like a, a some kind of a CGI cartoon uh, rendering of him there. But it does match the figure quite well. 
Um, but I'm surprised they have that there and not the real actor. This packaging's all right. I like it. Um, I like it better with the, the creatures, the dinosaurs. Um, but for their humans, their people, it's not bad. He does come with a lot of accessories. You can see there he's got a knife, extra set of hands, extra head, and it looks like a belt. I think that's what that is there. Well, we'll find out when we open it up. Um, there's the back of the packaging. It does have a little bio about Owen Grady there. And there's some of the other dinosaurs in the line. There is the Dimetrodon that we'll open next. I've heard this Carnotaurus is really, really good. I've seen some videos on him. I will try to grab him if I find him. Um, but I'm overall, I'm pretty happy with this line. These always seem to be around, I think around $12.99 to $14.99, depending on uh, if they're on sale or not, or if they're brand new. I've gotten several of them really cheap. And then I think I paid full price for this guy. Um, but I think I have most of them now. The only one I don't have is uh, Nedry, the 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 uh, the bad guy um, in the first movie. All right, but that's the packaging. Let's get it open. All right, guys. So here is the Hammond collection by Mattel Owen Grady figure, and he is quite a bit different than the two previous figures. We've got a science fiction. Uh, Star Wars figure we've got a superhero DC figure and now we've got kind of like a real world um, regular kind of person a contemporary person I should say um, he's he's not bad he's not bad I've only had him out just like all these just a minute or two um, I did notice right away I think he has the most points of articulation um, as compared to these two he also had the most accessories. Um, let's talk about the accessories really quick. He does come with this other head sculpt, but I just don't see, it's just not that different of a head sculpt. I think his mouth is open on this one. You can see in profile. And in the one, this one here, it's closed. So I'm not sure that justified a, a whole nother head. Um, but yeah, it, it's there. Just pops right on and off. There's a ball joint underneath. Um, but it's so similar. I don't I don't really see using it. So I don't see a reason to, to take this one off to put that one on when they look 99% the same. Um, he did come with two open hands, a left and a right. They are both hinged in and out. And he's got two gripping hands that he came with, which also both hinge in and out. And then he's got this, and I'm not sure what this is. I think this goes on blue. I think this goes on the raptor, I think on her head. Um, I'm not quite sure. doesn't say on the package what this is or, uh, you know, what this goes on. I thought it might be something he put over his shoulder like a bandolier, but I'm, I think this is a tracker or something. For the Raptor for blue, I think. It's a very soft, rubbery plastic. He also comes with this knife. Pretty cool looking knife. It's got a brown handle and a silver blade. It does fit right into the scabbard that he wears on the back of his belt. That is molded right onto him. That scabbard does not come off. And then he's also got this vest. It's uh, much like the same material as this. It's a very soft, uh, rubbery plastic. It is removable. So you could use this for another figure if you like. And it's just a sort of a, a fishing or a hunting vest, utility vest. It's, it's nice. It's sculpted patches on there, or a sculpted pouches, I should say, and pockets. Very cool. Very nice. Um... As far as articulation goes, he does have that ball jointed neck, uh, ball hinged shoulders, elbows, and those hinged wrists that I mentioned earlier. He does have a ball hinge at the waist, gives him a good, good range of movement. He's got ball hinged hips, a thigh swivel, double hinged knee, and I think that's what takes him that extra hinge at the knee is what gives him more articulation than that vintage collection figure 
So that's a single hinge knee. This is a double. And then he does have a swivel ankle. Doesn't feel like it. Oh, it, yeah, it does. It does pivot. Well, not pivot, but it, it hinges up and down and swivels. It's not a true rocker ankle. The, the issue with, with this guy's articulation, this is something Mattel does. Um, their ball hinged hips, you know, it always looks kind of funky. Um, I always feel like the, the crotch hangs too low, if, you, if that makes sense. Um, just doesn't seem quite right there. Um, and I know they used to do this on their Mattel multiverse uh, like six inch line before they lost it to McFarlane. This is sort of what they use on a lot of their stuff. This is kind of their engineering, their design. Doesn't always look right. And on this figure, I think it does look a little funky. His, his uh, zipper there on his pants, I feel like it should go under. Like it's a, this, this piece is a little too long. Um, and they, they get it right here on her and even on him, it's even though it's harder to see because of his tunic. Um, but the Mattel always seemed to, to do it this way. It just It's a little unrealistic for such a realistic looking figure. But I know that's just, that's how they they do their, their figures. Um, overall, he's a good figure. I don't have a lot of uh, real world, you know, contemporary type figures. This guy could fit in with that... Uh, the Texas uh, the Marshall that I got from Chicken Fried Toys um, or any of your, you know, uh, maybe he's a bystander or a scout or a guide for your, uh, you know, your G.I. Joes or something like that because this guy is kind of living amongst us. He's not in fantasy or superhero. He is just a, you know, a normal kind of dude. Would have been cool if he came with that lever action rifle that I know he had in uh, the first one, the first movie, that was a pretty cool firearm. Um, but he does have the knife, got a lot of accessories, his articulation's pretty good. I just I think that's kind of a weird how they do that there, and it does seem a little bit too long to me. But otherwise, all the sculpting in the pants, the vest, the shirt, very nice, buttoned up, opened at the top, the collar, very good looking figure. All right, now that we've got him open, let's open the dinosaur. Okay, here is the Dimetrodon. That's how I'm pronouncing that. Same packaging as Owen. Again, a little bio there. There's Owen right there. A few close-up shots. Pretty, pretty basic, just like the last one. I do like this packaging. Um, embossed Jurassic Park sign there. Cool. All right. Let's get him open. All right. And there's a little bit of assembly required here. There is a plug and you just snap that in. There you go. And that is not meant to come back out. Once you put that in there, it is good to go. And here he is the Dimetrodon. And I think that's the best thing about the Hammond Collection line. The humans, the people are pretty good. You know, they're not bad. We just looked at Owen. But the dinosaurs, these are the highlight of the line. You can see the little Jurassic Park symbol there on the bottom of his foot. He does not have any peg holes or anything. Um, he is low to the ground. You can see the scale there. He's not a very big dinosaur. I think they were the same price. They're about... I think fourteen ninety nine. Um, tail is rubber and does uh, you can uh, flex it, I guess, and and turn it whichever way you like. Straighten it out. Put Owen back up. He fell over. Um, let's talk about his articulation really quick. He does have a looks like a ball hinged neck. It does give you side to side, a little up and down. Got a hinged jaw. Doesn't close all the way, and it does open though all the way there. He's got uh, we'll call these shoulders. He's got four ball jointed shoulders. Um, you don't get much on the back legs. It's more of a wobble. 
what you do on the front. Um, nothing in his ankle though on the front, but you do get some ankle on the back legs. And they both will call that a knee or an elbow. You do have both of those. You just got to line them up so you can bend them. Now he's just out of package, so he's a little stiff, but he's nice. And I guess that means you could, if you can turn that tail, you can get him up on his hind legs. Kind of get him like he's, he's grasping at something. I think he'll stand just fine. Yeah. Yeah, that's pretty good. So you can get a lot of good poses out of him. Um, this fin is a softer plastic rubber. It's nice and straight though out of the package. It's got a great paint job. Got a little one. This is different plastic here. This is hard. Um, great sculpt, great paint. You can see his rib cage there. He's got all these, all this texture, all these little warts. Now his eyes though, on that packaging, they really kind of try to highlight the eyes. Let's see if I can show this to you. As if it's red. But you can see there's nothing in there. It's so small, it's so minor, you can barely pick it up on either side. It's barely there. That's okay. It's still a really good figure, a uh, really good creature, a lot of articulation. Like I said, these, this is the best part of this line, are these realistic looking dinosaurs without the, you know, the play features. My son has, we have tons of dinosaurs. Some of them, uh, you know, make noise. Some of them have the DNA thing that you slide up and you slide down so you can scan them with your phone. Um, some of them have the, you push the button and the jaw will open and close. Lots of different play features. These do not have those. And that, I think that's why I like these so much. This is uh, more realistic, about as realistic as you can get. Lots of articulation, great paint, great sculpt. Um, and they do come in I think there's three or four different sizes in the Hammond collection. This is the smallest size, so it is the same price as the humans or the people, and they are awesome. You can see it fits right in scale with all of these guys, um, and it's a great, great piece. You know, these can be used for anything. You know, they are dinosaurs, but if you want to use them in your real world stuff, um, you know, science fiction on a planet. Um, whatever you want a monster These are great pieces and I think at a good value too Hammer collection stuff does go on sale. I see it target quite a bit um, So and there, there's a lot of different dinosaurs. So, you know, if, if you want a little bit bigger one um, You can All right, so that is the video guys before I go though, let's kind of rate the um, rate the figures um, you know, it's not, it's kind of a snap judgment. Um, this guy, he doesn't quite fit in, but, but we'll, we'll rank him anyways. I think the Thrawn is actually the best and probably, probably the dinosaur Thrawn. These guys, it's kind of a toss up. I think she's actually looks better. Um, but he definitely has more articulation and came with more accessories. Um, so it's kind of a toss-up between the last two here. The Thrawn is by far the best out of these. This dinosaur is better than both of these two. Um, but she's pretty good. She's actually pretty good. Of course, her articulation is limited. Her hair sculpt, um, you know, it's, it's very specific to her being underwater or uh, blowing in the wind. Um. But she's good. She's a good figure at a good price. And this Owen Grady is pretty good too. I just have a problem with how that the crotch piece looks there. But this is a good solid figure. I'd be really happy with this one if I was a kid. 
Um, the Hammond collection's a little bit different, right? So the Spin Masters, I think, are specifically for kids. The Vintage Collection kind of falls in the middle, kind of like the Hammond Collection. A lot of collectors like me collect Vintage Collection stuff, but I know my son and a lot of kids still like this scale because of the ships, because of the play sets, um, you know, vehicles, that kind of thing. Um, and that's the same thing with this Hammond Collection because you'd still... Um, you've got dinosaurs, you know, kids still like dinosaurs. Um, you've still got people. Um, so it's kind of in the middle. Uh, and you can definitely, you know, all three of these you can still find in the toy aisle at your local Walmarts and Targets. All right, guys, so that's the video. Let me know what you think. Um, do you have any of these? I'm sure some of you do. If not, um, will you be picking any up? Thank you for watching. Please remember to like, comment, and subscribe, and I'll catch you next time. Bye.